Hello. Oh my goodness. Hey, you guys. Um, funny story. Funny, funny, funny story. Hope you can hear me. Sound check. Quick sound check. Hope you guys can hear me. I think that sometimes there's a little bit of a delay for anyone just joining. So I was sitting here thinking that I was live and I was talking for a couple of minutes because you can see it's now three minutes after the hour and I didn't, I didn't hit live. <laughs> I didn't hit live. So great. Lynn says sound is great. I trust you, Lynn. We're good to go. So, hey, you guys, I want to welcome you to another video episode of Power Pearls podcast. And today I am going to share even more ways that you can enlighten your stash. Because we've been talking about this over the last couple of weeks, with the exception, of course, of last week. Uh, for those of you who follow me here, you know I was talking about podcast movement and I was attending this amazing event uh, in Anaheim, California. And it's where if you're, you know, if you're a podcaster, this is the place to go. It's education, it's networking, it's meeting other podcasters, you know, exchanging, how do you do your show notes? How do you do this? Oh, that's kind of a cool thing that you do for a challenge, you know, things like that. So it's like coming home with an explosion in my, you know, my brain just explodes in a very similar way. Um, that I feel when I come back from TNNA. And many of you have heard me talk about the National Needle Arts Association. And for those of you that are new, because I see some new new faces. Hi, Heidi. Um, you know, it's a show that I attend. TNNA is is a by, uh, it's, every, it's twice a year. And I go to this show and it's like, uh, gosh, it's, it is, it's like another one of those head explosions. So uh, great, great, great time, lots of networking, meeting yarn companies, uh, contacts and all that stuff. And this is kind of like the same thing that was happening. So anyway, I don't want to babble on and on and I just want to get right to the topic. Uh, so what are we going to do today? So um, I'm going to show you how to yarn bomb a wine bottle. And also a little bracelet. I have this little bracelet form. I'm going to show you what I do with, to the other one that I have. Um, so a couple of different ideas, fun little um, ways that you can um, play around with uh, your stash to do some really quick, easy, mindless knitting. I love mindless knitting, but I also love mindful knitting, but mindless knitting. I know we've talked about that too, but sometimes you just need a little therapy as in stash therapy. So we're still kind of continuing on. And you guys, many of you have taken the challenge. I'm going to let you know just in a sec how you can actually join the replay if you, uh, you can take the replay if you would like to. Um, but you know, the only difference is that it's not a live challenge, but you guys can also take advantage of the replay if you're not yet a member of the podcast. So we're going to do the, the yarn bombing thing. And so you get a little taste for, you know, what was covered in the situation, uh, stash therapy challenge a few weeks ago. Um, and so if you want to take this at your own pace, if you're not yet a member, so you have to do, you have to be a member. So it's a dollar. That's not a big investment and you get three days of stash therapy, enlightenment. I think that's a pretty good, cool deal. Uh, and for those of you who are already a part of the Patreon community, uh, you can, you can take the, you know, replay and also coming up in a few weeks, next week, next week, uh, some tutorials are coming up. So we're going to keep this excitement going. Okay. So I'm going to do some tutorials that, you know, it's open only to you as a patron of the podcast. So if you want to sign up, and watch, you know, do the challenge. You can go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash stash therapy. And I'm going to, I'm going to put that up on the screen for you. So you can, um, this is what I love about this, this way of, um, there it is powerpearlspodcast.com stash therapy to join, to take the replay, do the challenge now, do it, do it, do it. And you'll be entered to win you'll have, you'll, you'll end, be entered for a chance to win, <laughs> a chance to win some yarn goodies. That's the cool thing. That's the cool thing. So, um, so do it, get involved. So anyway, so before we dive in, and I know a lot of you guys have already, you know, jumped in, uh, let's, I'm going to ask you guys to share this with your friends though, and then come back and say, Hey, I'm, you know, where you're viewing from say hello, but please take a moment now 
and share with your friends because the more the merrier. Uh, so if you could do that, I would be so, so grateful. So I'll just hang out here and I'll just wait while you do it. Just kidding. <laughs> I, always, I always like to be silly like that. But my husband says, I'm just really not really funny. I'm just kind of a geek. Um, so anyway, now jump into the comments and tell me where you guys are viewing from. I want to see where you're, where you're, where you're chiming in from in, in this, in this world. Ada, hello. Um, awesome. So Ada, I, it's a new face here on, in the group. We have Bev. How are you? Linda is here from Central Texas. Lynn is here from Michigan. Uh, Christy from the Pacific Northwest. Heidi is here. Hello. Heidi is a new face. We just welcomed her uh, in the Patreon group. So I'm happy to have you here. And Heidi, please make sure to take the challenge when you get a chance. Lena is here. Lynn um, says it sounds great. That was from before. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Jenny's here. Virginia, hello. Troy is here. Uh, Jenny says, I loved your profile picture, by the way. You rock, you look great, Carol. Well, thanks, Jenny. Actually, that was another perk. Uh, when I was in po at podcast movement, there was word going around. There was someone doing headshots. And so one of my podcasting buddies uh, got his done. And, uh, and he's like, oh, yeah, she's free, you know, to do this. So go ahead and, and you know, Book, her, book a session. And so I, I met her first and she showed me her portfolio and she did like 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, she took 90 photos of me. And, you know, it's just, it was great. I mean, with yarn, you know, I had one shot that you saw Jenny wearing, you know, something. And then I have my Power Pearls t-shirt. Anyway, it was fun. And uh, so now we're, we're officially friends on Facebook and I'm pr promoting the, promoting her like crazy. Um, she's awesome. Um, so let's see. So we have Diane here from Oregon. Um, Lynn says shared the video stopped. So I had to go out and come back missed a minute or two. No, no big deal. We're just having some chit chat Lynn. Um, and Heidi is from East coast, Canada. Well, that's pretty cool. And uh, my husband is from the East coast of Canada. He's from Nova Scotia. How exciting. Uh, we have Troy. Uh, Troy is from Brooklyn. Yay, Brooklyn. I'm a New Yorker, a native New Yorker. I mean, I'm not now. I live in Indiana, but you know what they say? You can't, you can take the girl out of the city, but you can't take the city out of the girl. Um, so Heidi says, great. Ha so happy to be here. Um, let's see. Uh, yay. And Heidi signed up for the challenge. Awesome. So this is great. So you guys, we're going to dive in now. Okay. And so for those of you just joining in now that we're just in full gear here, um, my name is Kara Gott Warner and I'm the host of Power Pearls podcast, designer, business coach, and your ultimate cheerleader on your yarn crafting path. And you know, you can catch me here every week with the exception of last week because I was away, but most weeks I'm going to be right here on the Power Pearls Facebook page for the live edition of Power Pearls podcast. And I wanted to point out one other thing. I have a free group here on Facebook. It's called the Situation, uh, Situation Community. So this is a free group. And so I know many of you watching, and I just haven't had a chance to really talk about this. But if you go to Situation Community at groups.facebook.com, or you can search group and type Stitchucation in the community, like in the, I'm sorry, Stitchucation in the search box. Um, it's, it's a free community. It's a free group. And I used to, I started it originally to just for challenges. And, and I basically told a lot of you guys that in between challenges it would be quiet. Right. But I decided like, this is a great opportunity to, um, to, to keep things going. And, you know, in, the difference between a page and a group on a page you, you guys can't create your own posts and have a conversation. Whereas in a group, you guys can start a real conversation. You can post your own photos, you know, the nice big post. I mean, you guys already know this, but that's important. And I think that's what's missing on this page. So I wanted you guys to know about the group. And I'm, I'm actually going to um, share that now, just like I did the other information, just so you have it. And then you can check it out. So I'm going to copy and paste here into the, um, onto the page. So check that out. So it's Stitchucation Community at groups.facebook.com. Or like I said, you can do that little search. It's a place where you can interact and take challenges, free challenges that I offer, um, you know, seek advice uh, and, you know, just communicate with like-minded knitters. So I hope you guys will uh, check that out if you haven't already 
uh, also, uh, you haven't already done that yet. Okay. So are you guys ready? So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So the, so let's dive into some yarn bombing. Okay. So what, like I said, I'm going to show you the, the, a few things. So I've got this wine bottle. Okay. And this is, um, actually I didn't, I did not cover this with, with, uh, yarn. It's jute. If you guys can see that, I'm going to put that close up here. Right. So it's jute and double sided tape. That's it. That's how I did it, right? And so what I, I painted this bottle first, you know, was just some white latex paint, nothing crazy. And then I just wrapped, I started uh, at the top and I just wrapped the strips, um, pieces of the double-sided tape around. And that's how I did this. And also I've got this little bracelet and I'm just hoping, I know it's, you guys have seen this before. I'm going to show you a few other ideas, but this might just spark some new ideas because, you know, you can do something like this and even add like, so here's, here it is on my bracelet, right? And uh, you could stop there, right? And you could paint this or you could um, add a tube like an I-cord. Um, a cool thing that you could do, right, is, is you could, you could, well, an I-cord you'd have to, I'm trying to, now I'm thinking, I'm thinking out loud here because it's like, you know, this, you'd have to figure out how to get the cord on here. So you could, um, you could even just take a, make a tube. Okay. So maybe not an I cord, but you know, like a little, a piece of a strip of knitted, you know, something in, in stockinette stitch. So it's not going to be too thick. And then you could uh, you know, attach that. And then on the inside, you could, you could secure it with more double-sided tape. But, you know, if you're afraid that that's going to fall off, you could just sew it, use a whip stitch and just make a little strip that's a little bit wider than whatever kind of bracelet you're going to make. But I mean, ideas, you know, just thoughts. So basically what I did was I put, I wrapped the double-sided tape on around the whole entire, um, piece here, the, the bracelet. And then I just wrapped my yarn until I didn't feel like wrapping it anymore. And what I did, this yarn, this is the little, do you guys remember when we did this, this Dituation shawls challenge? I showed you how to spit splice. Well, this is that spit spliced yarn. And so it creates this interesting rustic look because you can see how some of the orange is blending, is blending in there. And during the challenge, we made our own um, yarn cakes. Remember that? We made these little yarn cakes. And so you can, you can use those just to wrap and see what kind of colors kind of emerge. But I like the idea of this spit splicing look on smaller, with smaller bits, you can stripe it and stop and then spit splice. Or you could use a Russian join if you don't like the idea of spitting. Because, you know, some of us don't like that. So a Russian join is another way of doing it. And in the, um, during the challenge, I showed you how to work a Russian join. So, um, so check that out, watch the replay if you, if you need to, or if you decide to join, you can watch it, um, on the, one of the days of the challenge. So there's the bracelet. And, um, so I've, you know, I got a few different forms here. So that's, that's an idea. And then here is a little jar. I showed this to you guys um, in a, in a past video. So this was probably a pretty recent video and I had this little jar, um, that I used the double-sided tape again. Now you don't have to use double-sided tape, but I think that like, for example, see this little top that wouldn't stay on so good if I didn't use double-sided tape or glue, you could use a glue gun, but it's messy. This isn't messy. And so I love double-sided tape. When I discovered double-sided tape, the first time I ever discovered it, it was, I mean, it was just my best friend. It was like, like, like an aha moment. <laughs> and then I made this little collage with this little quote, it's upside down. Of course it's upside down. See it? It says, plant kindness and gather love. And that's sweet. You know, what could you put in here? Oh my gosh. Your many stitch markers. And then, you know, whenever you find the ones on the floor, you can stick them back in here too. <laughs> like my husband finds when he's uh, vacuuming. And so Jenny has a question. Jenny says, Kara, does the double-sided tape last 
a while or do you feel after a while the yarn comes off? You know what? I think, okay, so this one, this one that I made um, with jute, it hasn't come off. And, you know, you can see that with this, it hasn't come off either. I mean, it depends. Like if you're using it or touching it a lot, maybe. But a lot of the times, of course, these things that we make, they're so... Um, they're just, they're decorative and we want to have them as sort of like a little bit of a, like a showpiece. You don't have to use double-sided tape. I had, I did this little, uh, fun little, um, craft, this is a beer bottle. I guess you guys know I like to drink. Um, so anyway, <laughs> so here's a, just a beer bottle. I did not use double-sided tape. The thing that I liked about the beer bottle is there's like a little ridge right? There's a little ridge here. So it started, so it won't, it won't, won't go above that little ridge or that little lip here. And so I just started, you know, wrapping really securely. And then at the end, I just, I knotted it and I tucked it underneath so that it would just stay. And I, I did knot it. Um, and I know that knots, a lot of us hate knots in our knitting, but I did that. So that's for the, for that simple yarn bombing effect that doesn't involve any knitting. Like that's if you just want to be mindless and do something crafty with your yarn. And then this um, needle jar, it's a mason jar. And uh, this cozy, this actually is from a, a is it, it's one of my designs. And I have um, made this cozy multiple times and it conforms to like whatever size uh, you, you want to make it for. So I had this little um, candle um, candle, a glass, um, candle holder, and it was round and this fit on that. It just conformed. And why you may ask, well, it's pretty obvious because it's, it is all ripped. It's all ripped. So this is a, what I did here, knit to pearl to rib. And then at one point I dropped stitches and just wanted to add these beads, but I've also made it because I'm just going to kind of tell you how I did it. So you can actually go ahead and do it when we're done. So knit, knit to purl to. And so let's say you want to put this on a wine bottle or your water, you know, your, your water bottle or something. And I me you measure the circumference of your piece. And then I usually minus about an inch and a half to two inches. And then that's the circumference that I'm going to knit. And so you can do that simply by, you know, start doing your little, just like you do any gauge and then figuring out. So since it's a, it's a small circumference, you know, just do like, you can easily do just like, um, uh, just cast on, you could do it flat if you want, even though this is round, cause in the round, you should always do an in the round swatch. But I just say, you could eye it, right? You could get a, get a feel for it and just try to see how many stitches you think it would make um, that you would need to work um, to, to, to cover your piece or just do a flat swatch, you know, do like, I don't know, two to four inches, nothing crazy, measure it and then measure it. You might want to measure it, um, you know, depending on how you want it to be on your piece stretched or, or not. So ribbing, when you, when you measure your gauge for rib, it's either you want to remember if it's stretched or if you're measuring it without stretching. So, so, so you just have to remember that when you, if you measure your rib gauge stretched, that's how wide it's going to be when you put it on your piece. I hope that made sense. Um, but you know what, what, you know what you do? You just jump in and you try because it's so simple. And it's such an easy, easy way to like use your stash like right away. So um, those are just a few things. And then, then I have, I'm working with my little yarn cake, this little yarn cake that I made. Uh, we did that during the challenge, didn't we? So, um, so I have this bag. It's behind me or in front of, it's in front of me, not behind me. You guys have seen this bag, this, this crazy, crazy bag of, of swatches. And, and it's getting, it's dwindling because I've used a lot of these swatches for a variety of different projects. And I just realized it would have been so cool to show you this, this cowl that I designed a couple years ago. Uh, perfect, <laughs> perfect for, for what I'm going to show you right now. So, so basically, um, 
I would go randomly through my swatch bag and pick out some different shapes, different sizes, totally random. And so I'm working on this piece right here. And so what I decided to do was I thought, hmm, like, I just want to start, I just want to be completely free flow, free flowing, you know, who cares what comes next, almost like an abstract painting. That's like the best way that I can describe this feeling that it gives me, like when you're just doing whatever comes natural with a paintbrush. It's the same thing with your needles. And so I, I this was my swatch, this this pink one down here, pink and brown. And I just decided randomly to pick up stitches along, along the side and then just, but only go like maybe not even halfway. Right. And then, and then I changed color here, you know, using my little, my little yarn cake. I'm just going to keep on playing around with that. And who knows, maybe I'll, uh, you know, start to uh, add some open work and then you can, you can um, basically mix and match uh, what you're doing. So you can be picking up and knitting like that, or maybe you've got some other random swatches. These are some pretty, pretty colors, aren't these? Um, gorgeous. Um, and these are yarns that, you know, I just can't get anymore. But look at that. Just, 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 just a stockinette swatch. Look at how, how beautiful the colors are. So like you could just take your piece and, you know, just kind of play around and then figure out where you want the next piece to go. And you could just sew, sew those in place. And then really take a look at your work to figure out, well, where, okay, so where would be the next place to start? Yeah. So, um, Troy says like, like a crazy quilt, except with swatches. Exactly. And another term that I've heard used for this in, 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 in the past, I haven't heard it mentioned recently, but it's, uh, called scrumbling. Have you guys heard of scrumbling by any chance? So it's really, it's free form, random knitting, um, no rhyme or reason. And so I thought that would be a fun thing to show you, you know, so you can really get those crazy swatches up because that isn't that, that's a crazy one. This was the edge of a pillow and a, and a throw, like a blanket, a throw blanket for, from a book that I did, um, a few, a few years, more than a few years ago, my goodness. And so those are just, you know, just some fun, you know, just fun ideas. So um, let's see. So we talked about a lot of fun ways that you can, um, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. I lost my train of thought for a second there. Um, so I, I always like to give the patrons, you guys that are patrons watching, I always like to give you first priority to share tips and ask questions. So what I would like to do is just kind of switch gears here uh, and share some of the comments uh, from a post that I that I um, um, put up on in the group um, in the patrons only group, and I asked you guys how how you use your stash and to share your tips. And so um, I'm going to go and hop on over to the to this right now. So. Um, some fun ideas. I wish I could share my screen with you guys. Um, and I know that there are some tools like this, the one similar to the one that I'm using here, um, that let me share my screen. So I'm going to try to continually improve on the technology so I can do things like this. Cause I thought, Oh, how cool it would be for me to share what Kimberly Dawson posted. Um, so Kim is working on a, a mitered square blanket and uh, Sue Vargas also, same thing. And I uh, happen to have some little mitered squares and got them from that bag. And uh, and so Kim says, um, I mostly use fingering weight yarns and all, and all project scraps make a square. This is true. I mean, you can easily do that with anything. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be mitered, but the thing I love about mitered squares is they really hold your attention uh, and you can really get creative with these. As you can see, really, I mean, there's so many different ways to make, you could do this all two color or like what I did, just the corner is, um, is a different, you know, just solid all all solid. I mean, you know, it's endless. And in Kim's photo, you guys will have to go check it out. Um, cause she did the same thing and it's so cool and it's so random. It looks just like a piece of art. Um, so, uh, so check it out in the, uh, uh, in the patrons group, if you guys, uh, have a chance and it is, it was posted three hours ago and I said, share a D, a D, -ta -da, can't talk, D stash tip. Um, 
And I asked you guys to go ahead and do that. So that was, that's beautiful, beautiful, Kim. Love it. Um, and if you have any other tips, Kim, please, you're always very, um, kind to share those. Uh, please jump into the comments and share them. And then uh, Aaron, Aaron jumped in um, and to share all, all the exciting things that, that she's working on. So thanks for sharing. Um, so she has a few uh, de-stashing ideas that she's prototyping. So number one is a worsted blanket that will likely become a welcome blanket. Um, and let's see. Um, it has a 10 inch, 10 inch squares with a hole in the center to suspend a crocheted bead, uh, stitched to mimic a tri Tibetan prayer wheel. Wow. That's really interesting. Um, I can't wait to see that Aaron. I hope you do share it. Um, Aaron also mentions welcome baskets. Um, so they're 40 by 40, so not too, too, too difficult to make. Um, so using 16 squares from stash. And there are other ways. Um, I don't have it. I usually have my little box behind me. Ah, I took, I moved it. I love making little boxes. I started making those, I remember, years ago. So how to actually pick up a knit. So, you're, so you don't have to make separate squares and join them, although you can. But I love I love being able to pick up stitches and almost treat it like it's like it's a like it's a, a like a puzzle or like something I have to solve. So uh, so anyway, um, that's a that's great that's great, Erin. So I'd love to get your feedback, you guys, right now. If you think that would be fun to do, like how to make smaller projects like little baskets and bowls and and jewelry. I mean, little things. So if you want to see little things vote with your thumb or your heart, uh, or jump into the comments and just say, yes, please. Uh, let's see. So Aaron also mentions with a bit of cotton stash, washcloths are a quick knit. Um, and on knit picks, they have a bunch of free patterns. So you guys can check those out there. Uh, so, you know, it's really easy to make, make your own scraps. She says, um, let's see, I'm learning how to do the circular cast on to make circles as well, which of course makes me want to buy more cotton, um, which is not the purpose of de-stashing. Uh, Aaron also says market bags with more design element than simple mesh, linen stitch cowls with fingering stash because they ha they can have a really cool woven effect with multiple strands of random colors. I love that. That brings up another idea. Uh, you know, when you've got a lot of stash yarns and a lot of color and you just want to pull it all into a project and it's such a shame that it's just sitting there in your, um, in your dark box, right? Or your bin, if you have to keep yours behind, you know, closed doors, if you have cats, <laughs> um, because you can do two stripe rows. So you start your color, you know, on the, on the one side here, on the, on the right side, and then you work across and then you turn your work and you work the wrong side back. And then you drop your yarn, you pick up another color, you work. So you're always working your new color on the right side where all the yarns will kind of hang out. And the cool thing about that is when you do change colors, you can weave as you go. And I've showed you guys how to do that as well. We did that in the Stitchucation shawls challenge. Again, happy to show that because you guys voted with, uh, you know, I put out, I put out a poll in the Situation community, the free community that I mentioned to you guys earlier. And, um, and I asked you what you want to see the most of, and you guys all want demos. So I guess I got to do more work. Uh, but Aaron, thank you for sharing that. And then Lynn, uh, Lynn says, uh, hats, sweaters, mittens for dolls, like American to girl. Oh my gosh. Those are small mittens. Lynn, have you made little mittens for American Do girl dolls? I would love to see those because that is, that is impressive. Okay. Uh, um, oh yes. It says right there. You said it, have done it quite a few and given them away. Oh my goodness. That's so cool. Um, and then Bev uh, left a comment. Bev says, I make prayer shawls. Uh, we occasionally have a yarn swap at our sit and stitch meetings. And that's cool. S so doing a swap is really cool for yarns that you're just not, you know, you don't have any use for anymore. And then you know what? You're, someone else is probably going to fall in love with it. 
Um, so, or just you know, like I've said, I think I said in, in a past uh, video too, is like, give it to a friend, make someone's day. You know what I mean? All right. So that was cool. So I'm going to jump back here into the comments to see what you guys, if you guys have said anything here. So, um, cause I've been asking you a lot of questions. Um, so yes, Lynn says I have made, made some doll mittens. Linda says, uh, can you show us how to do a uh, stranding on a small project? Oh, sure. So that, that's, um, that would be a great idea, uh, Linda, to do color work, stranding, stranded color work on a small project. That's, that's great. Thanks for, for sharing that one. So awesome. I'm just seeing what you have what, more of what you guys have to say here. Um, so Jenny says, just a side note, Vicki Howell just showed knitted pom pom and flower earrings, which is also a great idea. Yeah, actually, that's true. So and I think she she plays around with the pom pom maker. So that's really a fun thing. There's so many different things. It's ridiculous, you guys. So some great ideas. And, uh, you know, um, let's see. So uh, yeah. And if you guys have any more, jump in here. Troy says baskets. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, baskets. Uh, I said little, yeah, little baskets in bowls. Uh, Linda says, uh, stranded color work. Um, uh, let's see mitered. What about mitered? You guys are, is anyone interested in mitered? Because, uh, I've done mitered tutorials, um, on the creative knitting, on the creative knitting Facebook page back when I was the editor. Um, there's so many different things you can do. I'm going to show you really quick because I pulled out some of my mitered stuff. So this is a swatch, actually. This is a swatch from a blanket. You can see there's some embroidery. I just used some, you know, added some embroidery to the to the um, to, to the surface. This is actually a swatch from a design that I did uh, in creative knitting. It was a blanket, a little lapgan, and then I used that same technique. So really, it's picking up and knitting. Like I said to you guys before, I love that idea to pick up and knit which eventually ended up, and Lynn actually made this and had this as one of her Facebook um, profile photos, this um, cowl, if you guys can see it, this cowl, this funky cowl that I designed for the Annie's Signature Designs collection. So maybe I need, need to put it on. Of course, messing up my hair. Hey, it's getting, it's starting to get cool, so I can start wearing cowls, but we can wear cowls anytime we want. So this thing can be worn so many different ways because it's got this button thing going on. I can't see myself opposite. That's the problem. So um, can you guys see that? So there, there's that. And then a matching hat. So it's amazing what you can do with an open mind, right? Uh, so this is all mitered triangles, triangles. So that's triangles. And it's just a matter of where you increase, decrease. And then this is only at the center, you know, so you do your double, either do like, um, a, uh, you know, you do your, yeah, you do your, your decreasing at the center, which ends up forming the, the square. So. Very cool. Very, very cool, you guys. So uh, I'm going to switch gears and I want to share uh, a little bit more about the Stash Therapy Challenge if you guys uh, haven't joined, if any of you guys are still, you know, wondering what's that all about. So uh, you can join by um, becoming a part of the Patreon community for a dollar. That's it. Just a dollar. And when you join, you get some serious stash therapy for three days, you guys. So if you, and, and also if you join now, you get um, a free pattern. Here it is. You guys remember this pattern? So you get this free stash busting pattern. Now I'm going to show you another version, same pattern, just slightly different. And I talk about how you can mix it up with color and add this little I chord closure instead of using a button, same pattern, just a few different tweaks. And I know people that have made that, that purse multiple, multiple times, and it's always different. And I know many people that, a lot of you guys that are, were part of the challenge, you made this bag already multiple times. So you get three days of lessons, or you can do it all at once. You can binge if you want to, since it's not a live challenge at this point. Um, but you'll get the, that pattern. And you also will get entered for your chance to win 
a giveaway for yarn goodies. I'm going to be giving away some yarn goodies. I'm going to talk about that next week. So you guys make sure you join, become a part of the Patreon uh, community for a dollar if you haven't done so yet. So if you go to powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash stash therapy, you can learn how you can join and uh, be, become a part of the excitement. So next week, uh, what am I going to talk about? So some of you guys have left some great comments on the Patreon uh, page and in the private group for some tutorials uh, that you want to see. So we're going to do a jogless join. So how to work a jogless join because, you know, this is um, this has some color work going on here, striping specifically. And that's what you, uh, you would use a jogless join for is when you're going to stripe so you can have a smooth join and you don't get that jog, you know, that jog that sh it looks like you have one row that kind of bumps up. So it's a jogless join. And another is how to work the buttonhole. So the buttonhole for this bag is a very smooth buttonhole because I have a little technique that I use. So you don't get a whack. So it's just a nice clean buttonhole. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to work that. Um, so I'm going to just, you know, just quick, quick share. So what you get each day. So day one is we're going to talk about what's in your bins and boxes and organization tips. Day two is building color palettes and organizing your leftovers. We're going to build some color story, <laughs> color stories, like tongue tied there. And then you can kind of brainstorm. We'll brainstorm and how and kind of think about what those colors are telling you. And then day three, we'll talk more about the wrister purse and alternative ways to customize with color and maximize your yarns. So check it out, powerpearlspodcast.com forward slash stash therapy. That's one word. Now take advantage of this soon. Test drive it. See what you think about the community. Get your free pattern um, because pretty soon the um, – the, this is an introductory rate because pretty soon the challenges, we're going to bump that up to another level. Um, but for now, you can enjoy this. Um, so you guys, that's pretty much it. So uh, this has been great. Um, so happy to spend my Wednesday with you. And sorry I missed you guys last week. Uh, you know, just sometimes, you know, life gets in the way and things things happen. So uh, let me see if any of you guys, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Love this little bag pattern, says Linda. I didn't scroll up to see all your comments coming through. Danielle says, very pretty mitered cowl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All awesome. So I think I caught, I got, got everyone. Linda says yes to mitered. Um, so um, yeah, this is great, you guys. So I will see you next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Power Pearls Facebook page. So See you guys and have a good one.